Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today is, uh, well, another new Edmonton OLS video, which I haven't done one in a bit. There's been a decent amount of news, not very much. I mean, just the Jesse Pugliarvi stuff and us signing Riley Sehan has been most of the news for the Edmonton OLS over this past summer. Uh, mainly, this old sports has been about the RFAs and Mitch Marner and stuff like that, and also Antonio Brown, which I've been hearing a shit ton about, which has just kind of ended since he just went and signed with the Pats. But we're not talking about football. We're going to be talking about the Oilers prospect pyramid. Now, I did get the idea from Steve Dangle, of course. I mean, everyone has. He's been kind of the originator of uh, doing the prospect pyramid, which is way better than doing like a fucking one to ten uh, top ten list of naming prospects. Uh, so practically what we're going to be doing today is going to be listing all tier fives. Now, I'm going to be saying that a lot of prospects will not be on this list. Reason why? Because they'll be lower, because they haven't had very much scouting. Uh, they're kind of just guesses like Vincent D'Arnais or some of the guys that we picked like Mateo Bunuel and however the fuck you say that name. And some of the guys that are right now in NCAA, I'm not going to put them on the list for the fact that they haven't had very much scouting. We really don't know what we're looking at in them. Uh, maybe a little bit of Vincent D'Arnais we know a little bit about, but he hasn't made his Baker, uh, Bakersfield Condors debut, which should be here soon. Uh, I did put him on tier 5 though, which we'll get to later on because he is a solid defenseman. I think he could be a top 6 defenseman because I did see him in that prospect game and he really impressed me. But there's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to be looking over today. Uh, so let's just get right into the first tier. Uh, tier number 1. Now there is no one there because of the first fact, like Steve Daniel says, it's not like Sidney Crosby or Connor McDavid level. No one deserves to be in that small little spot. McDavid, when he did get drafted... He was in that spot at one moment at time, but now we don't have like any franchise level prospects, so let's get on to tier two. Now, I don't know why the ink was so shitty, uh, but in the first tier, and sorry guys for my really bad writing, I'm really bad at writing. Uh, so for the first tier, we got Bouchard and Philip Broberg. Now, reason why for those two guys being there is because they're two of the best looking defensemen. I mean, Broberg was the second best or third best defenseman picked in that draft right behind Mort Snyder. And I, I believe that Broberg can really become, he's kind of like that potential of Oscar Kleffbaum. Uh, when Oscar Kleffbaum was kind of first came into the league where he had that kind of elite potential, but he really didn't pan out to be that elite level defenseman, a change maker. Now, Broberg, he's a big time defenseman who plays a really good two-way game, and he was really impressing at the Olinka Cup, and he's been really impressing a lot of the Oilers fans, which we were a little skeptical on the pick because we thought maybe we could go after Cole Caulfield or Matthew Baldy or someone that's a winger because we already got so many defensemen, but I think Ken Holland knows the Swedish defenseman. And Broberg is one of them. Where we could use another lefty, because I mean Chris Russell's going out the door here soon. We don't know what the future really is with Nurse and Clefbaum. It kind of gives us another guy that we can develop in the future, because nowhere near Broberg's not ready for the next couple years. He's going to play in the Swedish Elite League for a little bit, and I mean he was impressive. He should be playing up in the higher lap level this year. So we're going to get to see some more time from Philip Broberg, and he's been really impressive from the time uh, since the season has started there. He's been super impressive, and I'm really excited to see what type of next step he will be taking. Now, Alvin Bouchard, of course, one of the best prospects, um, of course, even higher than I think Philip Broberg. I was, to, uh, um, I was trying to make my mind up on whether I should put Broberg on Tier 3 or Tier 2. Of course, Tier 2 because he's an elite level defenseman, top 10 pick. Uh, but Evan Bouchard is just clear, no doubt, without a doubt, tier two. He's one of the best prospects in the Edmonton Oilers system right now. And he is really showing it. At the prospect game, he was showing that he has a great shot. He can skate. And he shows that he plays that good defensive hockey. And overall, yeah, he needs to work on it a bit. And I'm really excited to see what he could do in the preseason. And see if he can work towards that spot. Uh, to be playing in that top four position alongside of, Evan, or, uh, alongside of Oscar Kleppbaum, which would be a great spot for him. And honestly, I really do believe that Evan Bouchard can be that fucking man who can change the aspect of the Edmonton Oilers defense core, which I really hope he can do. After a great year with the London Knights, I'm hoping he could have a great year in the Condors or maybe up with the Edmonton Oilers, whatever Ken Holland decides. But I know what Ken Holland's going to kind of do with Bouchard. He's probably going to be playing in the minors this year for the fact that he wants to keep this team developing. Doesn't want to rush things, 
wants to develop them. So let's get on to tier three and uh, let's see what's on there. All right, here we are with tier three. So we got Cooper Morardi, Tyler Benson, Kaylee Yamamoto, Raphael Lavoy, and Dmitry Samarokov. Now, there's gonna be a lot of questions. Why didn't you have Ryan McLeod and Ethan Bear and shit up there like that? Um, the reason why is because those guys, I mean, they, Ryan McLeod had a really bad year in the, uh, the, or the juniors, I mean, which we'll talk about later on. But we're going to talk about the guys in Tier 3. We're going to start off things with Cooper Marotti after a great year, a point per game in the AHL, which is a really weird thing to say because, I mean, we can take a look at the countless Oilers prospects that came through the system. We never heard once of a point per game player in the AHL. Cooper Marotti has really proven us that he can be maybe a top six player. Now, no, he doesn't have the potential to be that, but he could be with the year that he had in the AHL. I have really high expectations for Cooper Marotti here in the future with him because honestly, he's a really good player and I'm hoping he can continue that success that he was having. And of course, Marotti and Benson, both of those guys were fantastic this year. And you could talk about how Benson's playmaking abilities were insane. I think he had like 41 assists and he was almost near a point per game as well with Cooper Murado. And they had a great playoffs with the Bakersfield. And they won like fucking 20 games in a row near the end of the year. Which is just mind blowing to really think that the Bakersfield Condors were to do that at the end of the year with these two guys manning that first line. And we don't see that, that we're actually having a good developmental system coming through with the ba Bakersfield team. Murado and Benson were the two guys that really showed a lot of potential. You could even talk about Kaylor Yamamoto also being on this list and people are like, he's a bust, he's not that great. Dude, this guy was sick. And yeah, he didn't have the greatest year when he was, went back to Spokane after he played for the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, he only had 64 points in 40 games, but that was still a good year. I mean, he was still 20, 20 points above a point per game, which is great. And he had a good year with Bakersfield Condors as well. I know he got injured, his wrist was fucked up, and I think he's still feeling that effect of being injured. So I'm not expecting Kayla Yamamoto to be at all in the NHL this year. He's not going to be making his debut, but he has that potential of being a speedy top six guy that could possibly play alongside of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl in the future. That's what I believe because Kayla Yamamoto has that speed to make it in the NHL. Yeah, a lot of people might be doubting him right now because of the kind of years that he's been having. And Edmonton Oilers fans seems to doubt players a lot when they start fucking getting injured or something starts to show that their weakness. Kenny Yamamoto is a good player. Pierre Shirelli and the, the group of scouts that we had picked them for a reason. And I think he's going to be a wonderful player to develop in the future for the Edmonton Oilers. Next up, Raphael Lavoie, who had a wonderful season, and my lord, was this a fucking steal of a pick, man. This was, I think, one of the best picks of the draft for the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, Broberg was good, but also the Raphael Lavoie, a guy who can play top six and is a power forward and could score points, he had a ridiculous fucking season. Played for the Halifax Mooseheads, which is my, my boy's Halifax. Uh, in 62 games, he had 73 points. But not just that. In the playoffs is where he took it over. In 23 games, he had 32 fucking points. In the Memorial Cup, in four games, he has had three points. He was a wonderful player. I don't know why anyone didn't take him. But man, wasn't it a steal of a pick for us? Because this guy is going to be a good fucking player for the Amy to know this. He's a real fun player to watch too. Because when I was watching the Memorial Cup, I was watching Raphael Lavoie thinking that this kid could be in the first round. But he fell back to the second round, which is just mind boggling. This guy should be a great piece, which we need that center depth, of course, which Raphael brings that. But he could also be a winger, which also we need that. Because we don't have very much depth offensively. Murado and Lavoie and Yamamoto and Benson adds that capability of those guys can be in the top six for the future and I'm really excited to see what those guys can do and we gotta get talking about Dmitry Samarokov. Now Dmitry had a wonderful year and you guys can say whatever about me saying his last name. Yes I have Don Cherry mispronunciation because I can't fucking say with his shit sometimes. 
I do mispronounce a lot of names because this is the way I see their names and then I fuck it up and it just kind of seems to stick that like that. Uh, we got to talk about Dimitri who uh, for some reason you guys are probably thinking what the fuck is this guy doing up here. But this guy has been a wonderful defenseman. Now he did make a couple mistakes in the prospect game and I can see that he still needs a lot of work. And I'm really going to be really excited if I see Dimitri and Evan Bouchard playing for the Bakersfield Condors this upcoming year because I feel like they could definitely definitely play that uh, role really good. Dimitri's a great two-way defenseman. He's a big guy. He can put up points. I mean, we've seen that from this past year with the Gulf Storm. In 59 games, he had 45 points. In the playoffs, he even did better. In 24 games, he had 28 points. And we've been seeing that he's been a really solid player. Even in the Memorial Cup, yeah, he only had one uh, point, but he was still a really good solid player for the team. And I believe that Dimitri will keep improving as a good defenseman. And he could be in that top four for sure. I mean, I don't know where he'll fit, but in the later future, yeah, he'll definitely fit in that top four for sure for the Edmonton Oilers. He's a real big prospect. And you take a look at it, Bouchard, Broberg, and Samarokov, as those are the three guys that we're looking at for the future of that defensive core. And they're going to be those three catalysts to really push to be having a better defensive core, of course, which hopefully can happen. And Dmitry Samarokov, I've been really impressed with him. He had a solid game at the Prospects game that I went to. I wasn't very impressed with him for the fact that he just had a rough game. He had one rough game, and I'm hoping that he can do really good with Bakersfield. Like a lot of the younger defensemen have been doing, like Bear and um, Ludlakes and stuff like that. I'm hoping I can see a good, uh, good year out of him as well. So let's get to Tier 4 as we're almost done. Uh, we got one or two more tiers to go, so let's get to Tier 4. Here we are with tier four. We got Ryan McLeod, Ostap Safin, Kirill Maximov, Caleb Jones, Ethan Bear, Joel Pearson, Stuart Skinner, Oliver Rodrigue, and Eliyev Kunovalov as well. Now this group of players have been impressing and these players could even crack in the tier three list for Christ's sakes because all these players, they're good. And no doubt about it, like Maximov could crack in that tier three. Uh, three even Ryan McLeod for Christ's sakes could even crack in that tier three because they're all really good players And they're all really solid. So let's just jump right into it Let's talk about Ryan McLeod now Ryan McLeod had a bit of an off year this year as he uh, got traded and Just struggled a bit. I mean he had the kind of the same year as he did last year uh, Wasn't playing his best hockey uh, from what the scouts have been saying but honestly, he was having the exact same year, and from what the potential says, he could even, like I said, he could crack in that tier three. But the reason why I put him in tier four was because that he's more of a top nine player, two way guy, and that he struggled a little bit this year. Wasn't the same as 2017, his draft year. I mean, 2018, his draft year wasn't the same. And his playoffs, he wasn't like a Raphael Lavoy where he was above a point per game in the playoffs. And he had a decent playoffs with the Bakersfield Condors as well. But I believe he's more of a tier four type of player. And he's no doubt about that, that Ryan McLeod is a great player and that adds center depth to a team that we haven't had very much center depth. I mean, yeah, Murado, Lavoy, McLeod now. All as your center depth. I mean, you take a look at it. Murado, if he only turns out to be a top nine player, fucking eight. And that's a top four player. Lavoy, he's definitely going to be a fucking voice to be reckoned with. A big power forward. And you have McLeod, who's a great two-way guy. I mean, that's just a great mix of centermans that you're going to overall need. A couple right-handers, a couple left-handers. It's perfect. And Ryan McLeod is definitely going to be a top nine player for sure. Maybe even a top six. Who knows what he will be able to turn out to be. And it all depends on how good of a year he can have in the Bakersfield Condors and with Kirill Maximov, who he played with in Sagana uh, this year as well. Never mind. 
Karel Maximov and Ryan McLeod did not play on the same team. I thought they did. This is, I remember Maximov got drafted when he was with the Song and Spirit, I'm pretty sure. He got traded to Niagara. So they were on different teams. But Karel Maximov, anyways, I was just thinking because they play on the same line. But they will be playing on the same line in Bakersfield, which I'm really excited because Maximov and McLeod is a bloody good one-two punch. And Maximov is another good player that I'm really happy about. Like, this guy, he, his potential is a little bit low, but I really think he could definitely skyrocket with a good year with Bakersfield. He has that kind of like top nine, top six fringe, but he has an elite level fucking scoring ability. Really needs to work on his skating ability because when I was watching him at the Prospects game, didn't have the greatest uh, goal scoring ability. Definitely does take a lot of penalties. He needs to work on it a bit. And he's a player that's a developing player. He's going to take a long time to develop. He's not going to be NHL ready next year. He's not going to be the net year after that. It's going to take him a couple years for Maximov to be really ready. I think one to two years, three years maybe in Bakersfield um, to really be ready to take a, a NHL position. Now, do I think this guy could be a first line 40 goal scorer? Fuck yeah. Do I think he might not? Yeah, I think that too. He's filled with mystery, mystery, mystery. Fuck, I cannot speak. He's filled with mystery, and Maximov can be an elite goal scorer. He just has to keep on developing. I really love his shot, though. His shot, I gotta say, he's the best. I didn't see very much during that Prospects game because Calgary's defense is next level, but he did play really good hockey, and I really do believe that Maximov can be a next big goal scorer, which we need because we don't have very many goal scorers on the Edmonton Oilers, of course, and Kirill Maximov, if he could take that next big step, I do believe he could be a 20, 30, 40 goal scorer for the team in the future, even if he's just playing on the third line. I mean, you take a look at tons of great goal scorers playing on third line. Grimner, for example, is one of them. He was a speedy young player, or he's not really young anymore, but speedy, could score tons of goals for teams, even if he's playing in a third line support role. So hopefully Maximov can develop into a good goal scorer. I'm really looking to be him as the big future of the team. Now, uh, one guy that's been climbing down the rankings of a good player is Ostop Safin. And this guy, man, he was up there at tier three at one moment of time. This guy was like, big top six guy. He's a big boy. He's six foot five. He's going to be a wonderful player in the future. And he just has not panned out. In Halifax, he got injured for most of the year. Came in 15 games, 11 points, and then fucking was shit. In both the Memorial Cup and the playoffs, in 23 games, he only had two points. So, all stop Sabin to me has been kind of just a big disappointment. But he had an injury, he came off, he hasn't played in over a practically a year, I think. He wasn't playing any hockey. So, you got to think that it took him a while to get back, and now he's here. Uh, he's going to be playing with the Bakersfield Condors uh, this year, so hopefully we'll have a bounce back year. I mean, that team is looking great in Condors, and I'm hoping they can really help out Safin become a better player. I don't remember very much. I don't even think he played in the fucking um, rookie game. Even if he did, he wasn't very noticeable of a player, so hoping he can really take a next step up. But uh, that's really it, though. That's all I have to say about Safin. So let's continue to the defenseman. Now, we're going to be talking about Jones, Baird, and Pearson, which we'll just talk about all in like kind of order because they all had the same kind of years with the AHL team. Jones, he's kind of more of a two-way guy, um, a really good skater. You have Ethan Baird, great offensive defenseman. Joel Pearson, who had a great year in the uh, Swedish Elite League. Uh, all players that are definitely top six guys. And I really do believe that if Pearson turns out to be a great defenseman this year, who might be playing alongside of Oscar Kleppbaum, rumors have it, if he plays really good, that's a perfect power play specialist right there. You have Ethan Baird who could do the exact same thing. These guys can also play in that top four. If they really start developing good, I believe these guys can definitely be top four uh, guys for sure. Uh, but right now, they have that potential of being top six power play, penalty kill sort of guys for the team. And I, I really do believe it's going to be a battle between Jones, Bear, Pearson, and Bouchard. Uh, to see who would be playing alongside of Oscar Kleppbaum. That's one fucking spot to be on the main roster for the Edmonton Oilers. So not very much leg room for defensemen right now, which is good. I mean, we haven't had that much competition in years for the Edmonton Oilers. We just give fucking players spots when they don't deserve it. So I'm really excited to see who will be fighting for that position. Next up, we got Skinner, Rodrigue, and Kunabalov. 
uh, practically we'll just talk about all these guys in a row again. Uh, Rodrigue will be playing his first year in uh, the uh, minor leagues this year, so the AHL and the ECHL. Uh, he'll probably be playing more in the ECHL with Dylan Wells, I'm guessing. Now, Rodrigue is still a big-time mystery to me. Same with Stuart Skinner. It's really hard to fucking put goalies on kind of like a list. Kunabalov, the reason why I put him on here as well, because he has that fucking potential. And the way that he played so well in the KHL this year, I really do believe he took over fucking Alexander Salak's spot for being the starting goaltender, which doesn't happen very much in the KHL. So, I mean, if Kunabalov has another great year where he has a 920, 930 save percentage in the K, I do believe that Kunabalov is going to be moving up a tier for next year's prospect pool because honestly, Kunavala, very bright looking defenseman for sure. Stuart Skinner, he's been here and there. Uh, he's had some great years in the juniors and stuff like that. A pretty decent year with Wichita and stuff like that. And a little bit of Bakersfield. I'm guessing he's probably going to get some more starts alongside of uh, Shane Starrett. I'm guessing this year. As Shane Starr will be our, the starting goaltender, for, of course, for the Bakersfield after the year he had making it to the All-Star game and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get to the final and last tier. Here we are, the last tier, and I'm sorry guys if you're hearing shit from outside, it's because there's tons of shit going on right now for some reason at like 2 p.m., I don't know. Uh, but here's your last team, or tier, we got Cameron Herbig, uh, William Lexon, Philip Berglund, Ryan Mantha, Joseph Gambardella, Dylan Wells, and Shane Start. I also forgot to put in Vincent DeArne. He also deserves to be on that list because he was a bloody good defenseman, which we'll talk about later on. Actually, yeah, we'll talk about it right now because... Vincent D'Arnais really, really impressed me at the uh, kind of the, the prospect game. I know it was one game, and I think he's going to be playing for the Bakersfield team this year since we, we did give him a contract, but he did we did give him an AHL contract. So I'm hoping he can really prove himself this year. He's a six foot six defenseman, which we've been seeing some pretty good ones, like Brandon Carlo, I'm hoping Zidane Acharya, you know? You know? Uh, but I don't know, Vincent D'Arnais is kind of like a guy that is still a mystery, but I feel like he'd definitely be a solid top six defenseman. Maybe in the future be maybe a tall four defenseman? I don't know. He's been having some good years in the NCAA, putting up some points, and I really loved his slap shot at the game as well. He had a really powerful slap shot like Zodina Chara, and if he keeps on developing and working on it, I feel like he could definitely be like a, a kind of a rougher type of a Zodane Chara, to be completely honest with you. He shows those capabilities. He can skate. He's a fast guy for being like six foot six, man. He's a big boy and he plays some good hockey, man. I'm really, really was really, really impressed. He's one of the players that really stood out for me out of that entire um, uh, prospect game. Cameron Hebig, a uh, guy that's been fucking doubted a ton, got a contract with us. He's been proving doubters wrong, and I'm hoping he can do it again this year with the Bakersfield Condors. Uh, maybe during spring tra uh, spring training, or spring training, spring, um, fuck, training camp, he could really show us some good shit as well during the preseason games and stuff like that. I'm hoping we could see some more development out of him. I mean, either way, he's either going to be one of the best AHL players, or he's going to be a great bottom six guy for the Edmonton Oilers. Now we got Lelakson, uh Berglund, sort of the same players, big defenseman. Lelakson really came out as a guy that was able to produce a lot of points for us, 27 points for us this year uh, in Bakersfield. So, I mean, he's a defensive guy. Like, he was mainly focused on defense, but he was able to put up a lot of points this year for Bakersfield. So he's developed in that offensive ability, which I'm really, really impressed by. He's a big guy. He kind of brings that old-fashioned defense into the league, which we have not seen for a bit. Very, very solid guy. Hopefully, he could be a big top six guy and be a solid defensive defenseman for the team, which we haven't had a good one in a long time. I mean, Chris Russell would be... He's a great defenseman. He's just paid too much, you know? Uh, Philip Berglund, kind of the same thing. We haven't seen him develop too much in the Swedish Elite League. Uh, he's been having the same year every single year. Uh, a little bit better defensively. He's been playing a lot of minutes there as well, so hopefully he will keep developing. I think he has one last year in the Swedish League, and then he should be moving up to the Bakersfield. Hopefully uh, we get to see him next year. Ryan Matha, who's been under the radar for a lot of uh, uh, for the Edmonton Oilers, of course, 
I uh, got an eye injury at the start of last year, but honestly, very solid defensively. I'm hoping he can make a great recovery because he's looking like a solid defenseman, man. We'll see what he can do at uh, training camp as well. And then we got Joseph Gambardella, who honestly showed very impressive stats here in the year with uh, the Bakersfield team. He scored a lot of goals this year. Uh, definitely a guy that could be a candidate to me making to the uh, Edmonton Oilers roster. Uh, so be ready for that. Uh, he could be making it next year. Uh, so that should be also really, really exciting. And then we got Wells and Starrett. Wells has been kind of a goalie that hasn't really impressed me very much. He struggled in the OHL more than what Rodrigue and Skinner has. Uh, Starrett, I mean, he's just a backup potential goalie. He had a great year in the AHL. Yes, maybe if we see it one more time, then maybe he can prove us wrong. Uh, but honestly, Starrett could become a starting goaltender. You never know. But right now, I think Starrett's more of a... Uh, medium backup potential goalie for us and uh, that's the way I'm going to be put it and then Vincent Darnay which we've already talked about already so there we guys are there's the prospect pyramid hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and stuff like that it was a lot of fun talking about it and shit like that uh, if you guys if I forgot anyone tell me guys tell me guys what you think you would do with the prospect pyramid and stuff like that uh, if you would move anybody around if you would move Robert down or Murata or whoever down uh, the list uh, you guys can tell me down in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Adios, amigos.